So proudly we hailed of the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watch were so gallantly. Coverage of tonight's national anthem presented by USAA, the official military appreciation sponsor of the NFL. Final act of week seven. It's the Ravens and the Cardinals next on Monday Night Football. You've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Kickoff, engineered by GMC and their lineup of Denali vehicles. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. 87 degrees outside here in Glendale. High 70s by the end of the game. No rain in sight, yet the roof is closed. In any case, we'll go on with the home team and Bruce Arians. His Cardinals have the lead. They can stay alone in the loss column in the lead with a win here tonight. Of course, the Rams are 3 and 3, 2 and 0 in the division. Everybody keeping an eye on the Seahawks. John Harbaugh, it's been a frustrating year. They're used to the playoffs. They're used to being near the top of the division, not 1 and 5 at the bottom, and battling to try to find a way to tie the Browns and stay within hailing distance. It's been a very difficult start for Steve Smith Sr. and the Ravens in terms of road games. This is their seventh game, first five on the road. And in Larry Fitzgerald's house, Arizona will get it first. The Cardinals have won the toss, and Carson Palmer and company elected to receive. Why not with a high power offense? Put him out there first. Justin Tucker, very good kicker. Only three kickoff returns by Ravens opponents all year. David Johnson back deep to receive. Took one back 108 against Chicago earlier this year. Won't get his hands on that one, and Pars Palmer and the Cardinals will start at the 20 yard line. There's Carson Palmer, number one overall pick a dozen years ago. Chance to move into the top 20 in all-time passing yards. He makes career start 150, and John, it's been much different and successful here with Arizona compared to Oakland, the last stop, or the original stop in Cincinnati. Yeah, Mike, and his knee is healthy, and that right arm is alive and well-rested. The system fits him perfectly. It's very aggressive, and he's got a real good supporting cast. A.Q. Shipley, backup offensive lineman, lines up as a fullback. They don't have a traditional fullback. And paving the way for Chris Johnson. Once a 2,000-yard rusher, he gains about six to the 26-yard line. Blocking for Palmer, Jared Veldeer, and Mikey Potty Strong on that left side. They want tough yards. They go that way. No Darren Fells' is tight end out with a shoulder injury. So Jermaine Gresham, the main tight end. You'll like David Johnson. Does a lot of good things as a running back and a receiver. And John talked about Fitzgerald, John Brown, and Michael Floyd. And how potent this offense has been, especially Fitz. Johnson runs to the right, first down. 
Easy gain of 10 thrown down by Elvis Doomerville. How about this Chris Johnson on a power play Mike you potty the ex San Francisco 49er pulls to his right against this Raven defense that's uncommon the one thing Baltimore has done better than anyone over the last 15 years is stop the run but Arizona is taking it right to him in these first two plays. There are major holes in that Ravens secondary especially at the safety position first Palmer pass is complete to John Brown one tackle miss first down Brown gain of 11 for John Brown in his second year out of Pittsburgh State. Well it's great timing and they're comparing this young man to a young Marvin Harrison and that's saying something timing pattern. Yards after the catch vertical speed John Brown. Perhaps the best kept secret of that great receiving class that came into this league last year, Mike. Yeah, so many good rookies last year. You saw what Brown did to the Steelers. Trying to do what A.J. Green did to the Ravens earlier this year. Deep drop Palmer. Brown again. First down again. Right in front of Jimmy Smith. It is very easy for Arizona here early. Jimmy Smith is struggling. He had that Liz Frank foot injury last year. I don't know if he's 100% healthy, but he's playing off coverage, and John Brown eats the cushion up and wins in transition. And Carson Palmer, with excellent protection, knows that John Brown can beat Jimmy Smith in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Thirty eight yard line here comes Chris Johnson trying to cut it back good tackle much needed stop by Daryl Smith longtime veteran and a good tackler for this Ravens team Brandon Williams is playing the best of the three up front in the three four CJ mostly came in had a terrific rookie season Elvis Doomerville third in the league in sacks last year only two and a half in the first six games I talked about the secondary Smith struggling with Darius Webb coming back. Will Hill and Brendan Trawick gets the start tonight. Trawick in for Kendrick Lewis, who injured his knee last week against San Francisco. He's essentially their fifth safety if you think of the players they've lost throughout this season. Chris Johnson on the carry to the 23 yard line. We mentioned earlier Chris Johnson, that great 2006 yard season. Back in 2009 with Tennessee, one of seven times in league history, a running back had a 2,000 yard season. Over 1,000 every other year in his career, except for last year with the Jets, kind of a lost season. Free agent who ended up signing here after being involved in what was termed a drive by shooting in Orlando in March. A bullet lodged in his trap. We're lucky to be alive. Past the physical, he's here, and he's run effectively so far. Third and six. Palmer pass rush trying to get to him and a big play by C.J. Mosley his third sack of the season will make this a long field goal attempt of 54. Well rookie David Johnson has to pass protect much better than this C.J. Mosley beats Johnson easily forces Palmer to push up and good second effort by Mosley the second year man out of Alabama to force a long field goal. It'll be 55 not 54 for the second year kicker out of Clemson Chandler Catanzaro. He has never made one this long in his NFL career. Play clock winding down as you see. And it's wide right no good. So after strolling down the field on the first five plays. The linebackers the inside linebackers for Baltimore come up with two big plays a run stop a sack and Kenton Zero's wide right from 55. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by Miller Lite back in its original bottle but not for long it's Miller time and NFL mobile watch live local and primetime games on your smartphone. Go to NFL.com slash mobile. The beauty of Sedona. Some of the beautiful sights here in the desert. Our coverage tonight from Spider Cam is brought to you by DirecTV. First drive for the Ravens. They haven't scored a point on their opening drive of a game all season. Flacco to use check the tight end. And a gain of nearly 10. That was the first play of the first half and the second half last week. A pass to use check from. Joe Flacco unflappable Joe Flacco 
And that's been hard to say with what's been going on. A guy's won the Super Bowl MVP, gambled and cashed in with that big contract. Johnny starts with a 119th consecutive game, fifth longest in NFL history. Got to start fast. If they could get something here, it would be a huge confidence builder for this offense. Jeremy Ross in motion. Justin Forsett up the middle. Big run for sets. Back to back 11 yard gains. First downs for Baltimore. When Jeremy Ross comes into the game, watch the jet sweep. This time, he comes across the formation. The Arizona Cardinals took the cheese and they handed the ball to Forsett instead of handing the ball off to Ross. Good deception in these first couple plays. You're seeing shifts, good personnel usage. First down, Ravens. The Arizona 33, four set to the left. That time would be stopped, gained about a yard or two. Dayon Buchanan, along with Rodney Gunter, on the stop. Trying to block up front. Two very good guards in Osemele and Marshall Yondo just got a new contract. Handling the ball, either handed off or thrown by Flacco. He's without one of his young tight ends and Max Williams. They're very young over there. Steve Smith, senior, keeps going, says it's his last year. Kamar Ink and Marlon Brown, those other receivers. Somebody else in the receiving core has to step up for Baltimore. They haven't had good years. Second and eight, Flacco. It is caught by one of those receivers, Kamar Aiken. In his third year out of Central Florida, we have a flag down. And for the first time tonight, we'll hear from second year NFL referee Ronald Torbert. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 93. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. Automatic first down. It's on Calais Campbell and will take Baltimore into the red zone. Ball be placed at the 13-yard line. Calais Campbell, who plays everywhere in this Arizona front, guilty of a big penalty. And this is important for Baltimore, Mike. They have not played with a lead much all year. And it's made this offense one dimensional. Flacco threw it 53 times last week. This is an impressive start. Let's see if they can capitalize. Forsett is the back. Three first downs on this drive. As many as they've had on opening drives all season. And they send it to the eligible John Urschel, the lineman Urschel, inside the eight to the seven yard line. So, John, when you're struggling on the opening drives, do anything you can, including throw it to Urschel. I love it. Get into an unbalanced line, bring Steve Smith across the field in motion, and throw a throwback screen to an offensive lineman. <laughs> You're seeing it all. We have a late flag down that was thrown, and then a hat thrown down to the play. Boy, John Harbaugh and the Ravens are very conscious of reporting and properly reporting after the issue in the AFC Divisional Playoff in Foxborough last year. And if this is one of those ineligible questions, Boy, would they be frustrated by that. Illegal formation by the offense. Number 64 was on the end of the line, did not record. It's a five-yard penalty, replay, first down. He looked right at him. You can read Harbaugh's lips. He, he wants to talk to the official. I will say this. If there's any team that's going to be very careful about properly reporting on an odd formation, it's going to be Harbaugh because of what happened and caused a complete stink Last year when New England was completely correct in what they did. But they used the max in the rule book to set up the formation. Wow. First and 15 after the flag. Flacco fires complete flag down Steve Smith senior thrown down by Patrick Peterson and they're going to see a lot of each other tonight. The flag was thrown by one of those wing officials who's watching the DB and the receiver. They got Patrick Peterson here for pass interference. They're fouls by both teams on the play. Holding offense number 72. Holding defense number 26. <laughs> Those fouls offset. We'll replay first down. This is the matchup of the night. Forget the penalty for a second, Mike. Patrick Peterson is going to find Steve Smith throughout the night and play man to man coverage. And this is a battle that you pay full price tickets to see watch Peterson looking for Steve Smith and believe me Steve Smith is looking for Peterson too. 
The battle both guys very much aware of coming in. And Peterson telling us this week he's not going to let Steve Smith Sr. get under his skin and take the bait of the verbal challenge. So we're back to first and 15. And Calais Campbell tracks down four sets. And it's getting heated here now as Osemele and Buchanan say hello. Take a look at Calais Campbell playing the defensive tackle position. Rare closing ability, and you don't find defensive linemen that are six foot eight, 305 pounds with his stamina often. First Pro Bowl last year, well deserved. He'll be heading back to Honolulu this year if he stays healthy. You see how good that Cardinals defense has been. Negative rushing plays. Loss of one, second and 16. Check down for set. Could not get away from Kevin Minter with the tackle. And it will be third down coming against this Arizona Cardinals defense that up front features Campbell playing all over that defensive line. Gunter, promising rookie, who they took in the fourth round. Lamar Woodley tries to bring it off the edge along with Marcus Golden. Dale Buchanan wears 20, plays a linebacker spot, but he's so versatile and mixes in, mixes in with these other 20s. We've already talked about Peterson, Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badgers in the house, and so is Dwight Freeney. Who they signed a couple of weeks ago for these situations. And he's in that patented left handed stance. Let's see what kind of juice he has left. Third and 12, the pressure comes. Flacco sacked. Frosty Rucker gets the second of the season for the 10 year veteran from Southern Cal. They've got more depth in this defensive line than they've had in a long time. And Frosty Rucker, the ex Cincinnati Bengal, has been an outstanding inside presence this year. One gap penetrator in a running game. He's got pass rush ability, and it sets up a long field goal once again. Great kicker Justin Tucker's already missed three this year. His power fades very often. Ball will travel usually from left to right as he kicks it. Bangs that through from 44 for the game's first points. I'm sure John Harbaugh is going to be looking to have a word or two with the referee. Three nothing Baltimore on top first quarter. Well, as we did go to break, John Harbaugh asked his player Urschel, the offensive lineman who caught the pass, "Did you report?" He said yes, and then he got Ron Torbert to come over. He said. He gave you that clear signal that he was reporting. Looked right at the referee, and here it is. Watch Urschel come in and look right at the referee, Ron Torbert, and that's the universal football symbol of 64 is eligible. Now, if there was a formation issue, it would be another thing, but he reported as an eligible and was on the end of the line, and there was no other receiver covering him up on that side. So, well, Urschel is a Rhodes Scholar. He's not going to forget the report, Mike. He just did report. I understand Harbaugh for being upset on that. That's ridiculous. Ravens do score on their first possession for the first time all year. And Tucker not going through the uprights before and does virtually the same thing with that one. Drive two for Arizona and Larry Fitzgerald in a moment. Panthers last night beat the Eagles Carolina undefeated and Andrew Luck and the Colts bring all their troubles to try to get well against a pretty darn good looking team in Cam Newton and the Panthers Monday night 815 Eastern from Charlotte the Panthers joining the Packers the Broncos the Bengals and the Patriots five teams starting this season six and zero oh, in NFL first we look forward to Charlotte next Monday night Carson Palmer drive two, starting from his own 20 and over the middle it's complete. Jermaine Gresham, the former Bengal, games 21 and an Arizona first down. Well, you might as well go after the fifth safety of the Ravens. Brendan Trowick, number 28, forced into duty because of all the injuries. Can't handle Jermaine Gresham. The ex Pro Bowl tight end, another former Cincinnati Bengal. That looked easy. Trowick has mostly been a special teams player in his third year out of Troy. In because of the injury to Kendrick Lewis, and they've lost a bunch of other safeties during the year. Palmer back at it, climbs the pocket, looking for Michael Floyd. 
inside the 30. Floyd pushed out of bounds with the 27. It's a gain of 32. When you have speed like John Brown, you can use it in a lot of different ways. He clears it out deep, and that allows Michael Floyd to work the vacated zone underneath a beautiful corner route by Floyd, who's now healthy. Mike Floyd hasn't done much yet this year. He had a terrible hand injury, broke three fingers, but he averaged 18 yards a catch last year. They have three men that can go get the ball deep. With deep passes to start this drive. Try to set up the run with Chris Johnson. Bouncing off a tackle, Johnson picking up blocks, might go, will go. Cardinal touchdown. This is something I haven't seen in the desert in a long time. Balance. And a lot of people think that Chris Johnson is an old back. He's 30 years old, Mike. And he's hungry. Watch Chris Johnson off the right side on this stretch play. He shows his strength in the hole. Shedding tacklers. And once he finds his gear, he's gone. But Chris Johnson has found new life in Arizona. And if this offense becomes balanced, they become almost unstoppable, Mike, with these receivers and this quarterback playing the way he is. 320-plus yard plays. Catanzaro with the extra point. And Arizona responds quickly. Just a minute 26 after the Baltimore field goal. Capped off by the touchdown for Johnson. mentioned earlier that Chris Johnson's lucky to be alive he happened to be checking his cell phone so it was a bit hunched over when at 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning he was in Orlando a passenger in a car it was a drive by shooting the driver was killed Johnson saw the bullet go into his shoulder lodge in his trap no surgery was required it's a question if Johnson was going to be able to sign the Cardinals brought him here checked him out passed the physical and he has come in and gotten off to a good start. Top five of the league in rushing, entering this week, playing about half the snaps. And just took in his third touchdown for Bruce Arians' team. This mix of veterans and young players throughout this roster. And Johnson has come in and given them a much different look in the running back position. So the Ravens figure out what in the wide world they can do on the back end because they are struggling in the secondary. Catanzaro. Kicks off to Jeremy Ross, and no return here. Lisa, you spoke to Chris Johnson on Saturday. Yeah, Mike. Well, Chris Johnson still has that bullet in his right shoulder. Doctors told him that it would cause too much damage to take it out, but he's still feeling the effects of that gunshot wound right after it happened. He said that he started experiencing throbbing pain in his right hand because of nerve damage. It lasted for about three months. He couldn't even move his right hand. Eventually it started to feel better he said but he had to relearn how to grip the football. I asked him if it bothers him now. He said sometimes you'll see him flexing his hand on the sideline. He said that's just to relieve the pressure because sometimes he still has cramping. Mike. Wow. Thanks Lise. Flacco first down pass. Morrow was chasing him. Josh Morrow and Flacco just had to get rid of it and the pass incomplete. Arizona <laughs> continues to blitz. Two approaches here with this Cardinal defense. They show pressure and they bluff out of there and don't bring it. And every once in a while, they're still bringing their well-known pressures, Mike. They have the coverage people to handle one-on-one -on -one in the back end all across the board. Powers, Peterson, and the Honey Badger can get it done. Second and 10, four set. Good job finding space. Nice blocking with those three receivers in the bunch on the right side, four set. Gains eight yards. So you all know what happened with Ray Rice and Justin Forsett ends up becoming the back last year. And he goes to the Pro Bowl. 1,266 yards, fifth in the league. A truly a journeyman back. You see that he was there with the Seahawks. Backed up Marshawn Lynch for a bit. Went to Houston for a year. Jacksonville for a year. He was never the featured back anywhere. Got here and did a great job for Baltimore last year. And he's off to a good start again this season. Third and one pressure up the middle. 
The flag is down, stopping the play before Alex uh, Marcus Golden, excuse me, pulls down for a set. There was no play. There was no play prior to the snap. Ball start. Offense number 44. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Timely mistake by the fullback. Use check. And here comes Dwight Franey again. A couple weeks ago, Franey was signed to bolster this pass rush. You're going to see Marcus Golden, the rookie from Missouri, on one side, the veteran Franey on the other. They need to pick up their pressure in these third down situations. In the slot to Flacco's left will be Steve Smith Sr. against Peterson. Third and six, looking that way, going that way. Smith across the middle, first down to the 45 and a gain of 21. How does he do it? Steve Smith, he's got back problems. I think he has some broken bones in his back, and he's having one of the great starts to his career. Here's a shallow cross against Patrick Peterson. Joe Flacco gives him a ball that he can run with, and Steve Smith picks it up. There's Dwight Freeney on a power rush against Wagner, and Wagner does an excellent job. First down, Baltimore. You got to love Steve Smith. Four micro fractures in his back. You heard on Countdown his conversation with Lisa. He's wearing all quarterback protection. Rib jacket. Protect the back. Playoff just in time. And Forsett got away from two. And lucky to get a yard out of this. As Dayon Buchanan stops him. That's what you see Joe Flacco do a lot in this running game. There's a lot of check with me's. They'll call a strong side run. They'll kill it with a weak side run. That time he barely got the playoff. And in second down and long, here's the veteran Steve Smith. But who else, Mike, in this Raven receiving core can step up tonight? Joe Flacco needs some more viable targets. C37, Javorius Buck Allen. Rookie out of Southern Cal, fourth round pick. He's the back replacing four set. Smith and Peterson go to the left. And Allen up the middle. Got tripped. Otherwise, could have been a bigger gain. Onto the Cardinal side of the 47 yard line. Third down for Mark Tressman to find a play on his play sheet. Was the Bears head coach the last couple of years. Has had so many stops. And John, he came in and he tried to keep as much of the offensive terminology the same for Joe Flacco, who's on his fourth coordinator in four years. Just unfortunate they've had no continuity at the skill positions. Other than Steve Smith, there's a lot of unknowns at tight end and at wide receiver, and it's been tough on Flacco. Third and three, pressure up the middle. Buchanan goes up in the air. The pass is caught by Nick Boyle, the rookie out of Delaware. Blue hen to blue hen. First down for the Ravens. Blue hen to blue hen. Watch the blitz. It's going to come right up the middle in Flacco's face. Whew. And he stands in there, throws a beautiful hot throw to the rookie tight end. Joe Flacco will not go quietly. You can say they're one in five. Things haven't gone well. They've had a lot of West Coast trips, but adversity usually brings out the best in Joe Flacco. One drive for Baltimore, a field goal. Arizona responded with a touchdown. After a loss, yeah. well, Joe Flacco's lost all of his offensive pieces and three different offensive coordinators the last three years. Now it's four in four years with the addition of Mark Tressman. And the people used to hand it to or throw it to are gone. Bold and Torrey Smith, those two guys are in San Francisco. They were on the opposite sideline last week. Where Jacoby Jones, big plays in the Super Bowl. Pitt is still trying to come back from his hip injury. It's not Oceanic Flight 815, which was the theme for that TV show, Lost. But Flacco's left alone on the island. All of his pieces, not one guy to hand it or throw it to, who was with him on that Super Bowl Sunday just under three years ago. Including his first round draft choice, Perryman, the wide receiver they were counting on. A good start for the Ravens. First and 10 for the 38. They'll lose yardage there as Buchanan gets in. 
to stop four set for the loss of one. John, how tough is that on a quarterback? You have no idea how tough it is. When you have four different offensive coordinators in four years, that's why I called the plays when I was coaching, because I didn't want to replace the coordinator every year. Gary Kubiak not only left and went to Denver, he took three coaches with him. So everything's new every year to Flacco, and you're telling me he's got a brand new supporting cast? Good luck. Sometimes those small things are the difference in all these close games they've lost. Second and 11, pressure up the middle, Flacco throwing deep, and it's Gibbons who couldn't hang on. The Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew there in coverage. Gibbons had a step on him. I think Joe missed that throw. Gibbons was acquired in a trade from the St. Louis Rams because he can run. I'm sorry, he's in the slot. Going right down the middle of the defense. Ball's underthrown, and Tyron Matthew makes an excellent play. How about that hang time? But Flacco underthrew Gibbons. He had him. As the ball came down, I believe it hit his shoe and stayed up in the air. Could have been intercepted. In any case, it is third and 11. Cardinals bring four. Ravens block it, and Flacco finds Smith. As he's done so many times, first down, Steve Smith, senior. Credit the Raven offensive line. This group is intact from left tackle to right tackle. They give Flacco time to step up in the pocket, and he hums a strike to Steve Smith. Just watch the pass protection. There's no one near Flacco. Good timing. I'm convinced Steve Smith lists his victims, Mike. He has a list of all his victims. I think I'm at the top of his list. This sounds like personal experience there. <laughs> Play 10 of the draw. Go run four set left. Only gain a yard on that one. Calais Campbell combining with Ed Stinson. We have a penalty flag down. Preliminary signal on Baltimore. Holding. Offense number 60. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. At the left tackle, Eugene Monroe. Well, John, you talked about it. Among the coaches Steve Smith has faced in his career, only Sean Payton right up there. Your pal is right in the same neighborhood. So you're not kidding when no. you say it. Mike, when he walked into the production meeting the other day, I started sweating. <laughs> I did not ever like to see Steve Smith and Rodney Harrison. Those, Those were the two. two guys that still, they really bother me. Still scare you? They're, they're scary. So when Rodney's on on Sunday nights, you just kind of turn Start away? Turn channel. <laughs> Got to go. First and 20 after the flag on the tackle Monroe. Deep drop Flacco over the head of Juszczyk and incomplete. Couldn't get that screen set up. You just see the frustration in Flacco's eyes. He misses Givens down the field and that time he has Juszczyk in the flat on a screen pass. Just not able to connect on all cylinder cylinders. It's been sluggish this year for this Raven offense. The officials met briefly for a conference. The play clock was not reset. The Ravens didn't stop what they were doing, so they stay on time for second and 20. Oh, boy. Look out. Bonnie Badger right there. And he brings down Gibbons for a big loss. I love this kid. His playing style at this size is unbelievable. He's five foot nine, 185 pounds, and he plays with a vicious mentality that time it's a safety blitz and his instincts Mike he doesn't overrun plays he senses plays he trusts his preparation and he loves the big lights gonna be a great one they lost eight yards on that play prior play you had the penalty Arizona has to take a timeout because they have 12 players on the field don't want to get caught here Right now, Baltimore's out of field goal range, but only a few yards away from getting Tucker close. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. Gillette, one pro glide refill up to one month of comfortable shades. And ESPNFanshop.com, which is powered by Dick's Sporting Goods. Hello, Akuna, great artist who carves pumpkins in the Enchanted Pumpkin Garden over in Carefree, Arizona. So his handiwork there as we get to the Halloween season. 
weekend, I should say. So they're at the 40. From here, it's a 58-yard field goal. Tucker is one of the strongest legs in the league. On third and 27, the Ravens would serve themselves just getting 10 yards and try to get even closer for Tucker. Arizona blitzes. That's why they run for set. And he can't get away from it. Chased down by Calais Campbell. Let's see what Harbaugh will do. 58-yard field goal from here, so they will punt. That's a great call. That's a great call. They're going to bring a blitz off the left side. You'll see Tyron Matthew in the charge, but it's Calais Campbell. And that range that he has, that's uncommon <laughs> at the defensive line <laughs> position. This man can run. At 6'8 and 300 pounds. Some very good punters in the AFC, especially the AFC North. Sam Cook, outstanding. Second in net in the NFL this year. Fair catch signal made. And will it be stopped at the goal line? Trying to keep the toes inside the line and keep the ball from breaking it. I think it looked all good there. Darren Waller started it. Anthony Levine finished it off. Has 99 yards to go for Arizona. You mentioned Cook, one of the outstanding punchers in terms of net. Bailed out flat going company on that one. Bruce Arians has thrown the challenge flag. Steve Smith on the right is talking to Darren Waller, who's down there trying to keep the ball in. Again, in college, it's with the ball breaks the plane. Bring in Jerry Austin. In the pros, it's where the feet of the player are. Jerry? What do you see here from what I see right here he's about a half inch from the line therefore he's still in the field to play forget where the ball is it's the feet of the man that's going to possess it and once it's possessed and then releases it the ball becomes dead that's going to be the key right here Jerry is he touching the line or is he on the good side of the line is there anything definitive to say he is touching because the ruling on the field was that he was not. That is correct. And the ruling here is they have to have irrefutable visual evidence to change it. So Ron Torbert's been in conversation with the game day central in New York. And we'll have the conclusion to see where Arizona has it. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Arizona will be charged with their second time out of the half. So they have one timeout. They can't earn a third challenge. John, they've got 99 yards to go. But that doesn't stop Arizona from having the full playbook available to them. No, it doesn't. They're well known to go deep here. If the look presents itself in a predictable running situation, Palmer will throw it. What does irrefutable mean, Mike? I think you got to be sure. Are you sure? Be sure that you're careful with John Brown at the <laughs> top of the screen. 14 plays in NFL history have gone for 99 yards. Palmer will just hand it off. Won't go for the deep shot here. Chris Johnson for one. And the Ravens stop him there. Well, you talked about the deep shots and the penchant to go yard, if you will. 21 plus yards down the field. 11 times he challenged the Steelers. That's a career high for Carson Palmer. And then when you try to set it up this week, John, this is a weakness for the Ravens defense. And it really handicaps defensive coordinator Dean Peace because he wants to get help for his secondary men. But when he does that, they're vulnerable against the run. Let's see what happens. Rookie David Johnson is the back now. Palmer throwing Fitzgerald. There's space to operate. And then so Larry Fitzgerald will be marked out at the 16, a 13 yard first down game. It's a beautiful slot combination. Two receivers together. John Brown once again the deep element and it's Larry Fitzgerald who is having an unbelievable season. Blocking receiving he's the emotional leader of the Cardinals. He's rolling 170 in a row now in his 12th year out of Pittsburgh. Career best start through six games for Fitz. Chris Johnson left. Gain about two yards. You know, Bruce Arians, he's been around, Mike. 63 years old. This is his 13th stop 
and I bet he's having more fun calling running plays than he's ever had before. Last year, just three and a half yards, less than that per carry. But this year, it's the balance in this offense that has opened up his playbook, and it changes every week. He's got an extensive game plan. And here's the first time they've been in that no-back set that he's known for. Andre Ellington jumps out, so it's five receivers for second and six. You see how Palmer looked right, was covered, takes off at the middle, and Carson gains three yards to the 23-yard line before being pulled down by the fellow veteran and Chris Canty now in his 11th year in the league. Every week, you're going to see 10 to 12 shots of no back formations, and it's important defensively watch the Ravens they're going to show blitz you don't know who's coming and who's going that time they had a strange blitz you saw number 54 Zachary or a backup linebacker obviously blitz the wrong gap and it's these errors that they've made on defense that have been very frustrating to this Raven coaching staff you can just see communication here Daryl Smith's trying to get his guys lined up they're all over the map with confusion and the timeout is taken by Baltimore it looked like there was nobody to cover J.J. Nelson. So timeout Ravens. Comes down, time to shine the Monday night lights on a terrific team in the area. Jim Rattay is the coach. The school is Cesar Chavez High School, located in Levine, just south of Phoenix. Seven state titles. Coach Rattay over 300 wins. This team's 8 and 1 this year. They got a chance to go visit the Cardinals yesterday as they went through their final walkthrough, talked to the likes of Carson Palmer, Tyron Matthew, Calais Campbell, and others. They played Division Three, the Arizona Interscholastic Association. Won eight in a row. Four shutouts. Trying to make another run at a title. Chance to take a selfie with BA and the rest of the cards. We salute Cesar Chavez High School from the Phoenix area here tonight. Third and three, five in the pattern for Palmer, who goes for the tight end Gresham. Can't hang on. Big hit coming across by Will Hill. And the safety play of the Ravens brings up fourth down. I love that. Will Hill says, you want to throw the vertical passing game against us? Go ahead. What a beautiful range play by Will Hill. He times it perfectly. And that's legal. In the strike zone there, below the helmet. Jeremy Ross back for the punt. Kicked away by Drew Butler. Pick is 52 and a fair caught at the 25 by Ross. And a flag comes down. Right at the end of the kick on the far side. Illegal block in the back on Trey Walker. And Jerry Rossberg, veteran special teams coach, will talk to the player that'll push it back for the Ravens when we come back. Well, Tyron Matthew, there were questions about his size coming out of LSU, and then questions would he be mature enough to do it on a down in, down out basis in the league? Not from a football standpoint. But with the other decisions, remember he was dismissed from LSU. But Tyron Matthews has come into the league and battled injuries his first couple of seasons. And this year is having a real breakthrough season. Hope you got to see John's visit with Tyron Matthew from Monday Night Countdown. A great knowledgeable football player who really seems to have his act in order. And has done a sensational job on the field. In the first six games of this Cardinal season. The 16, it's Flacco. The pressure up the middle, Woodley chasing him, and Flacco throws, look out! Big hit, but, steep, but it's uh, rather Justin Forsett who hangs on after a shot. Johnson hits him, gain of about four. A lot of speed in his Arizona secondary. They play at least five defensive backs at a time. That time, Rashad Johnson, another SEC defensive <laughs> back, read that the whole way for the big hit. It's second down at six. Peterson, Matthew, Rashad Johnson, and Gerard Powers played at Auburn. Very tight-knit group, a lot of speed. 
You get the whole SEC network in the back end here for the Cardinals. There's Powers who came up. Well, War Eagle. You have to appreciate cornerbacks that tackle. Everybody talks about Carolina, their corners tackle. You'll see Powers come off the left side and form fit Justin Forsett for nothing. That's impressive when you can get your corners to be physical presence people off the edge. Nice work. Ravens can't run it so far. 10 for 19 yards. So this secondary gets a chance to show what they're made of. Blacko has looked for Smith in these pressure shots. Third down. And underneath it's Ross this time. Got a block from Smith. He'll get the first down right near the 30 yard line. Bruce Arians is saying that should be offensive pass interference on Smith. Oh, and Jeremy Ross is in the game. It's going to be a quick screen, a jet sweep, or a reverse. Watch Steve Smith. Is it or isn't it legal? I don't think it is, but he's not blocking. He's just getting in the way. You can block <laughs> okay. within within a yard or so. If you are contacting and blocking two yards from the line of scrimmage as a receiver, and they've been very good about calling that this year. Just getting in the way is a tough one for the officials. First down and Flacco with a shot and Smith able to pull that one down despite the hit from Johnson at the 42 yard line a gain of 28. It's a great job by Mark Trespin. They switched the release of these seam route runners and Smith came clean. Watch number 14 Brown and Smith 89 switch on their release and it's a great throw by Joe Flacco and Steve Smith no fear in the crowd none. Three for 67 for Smith. People have talked about him retiring after this year. He still says he's on pace to do that. Some folks said tough Raven season. Maybe they should trade him. Buck Allen with the run to the 30. Allen to the 27 yard line. First down run of 15 yards. Lisa, what Steve Smith tell you about trade possibility this week? Yeah, Mike, he said he has no intention of playing for any other team other than the Ravens to close out here his career. When he heard the talk, he talked to the Ravens. They talked to him, assured him they were not shopping him. But I asked him why he wouldn't even consider it to close out with a contender. And he said, look, if you're cashing it in in week seven, then you don't have faith that we can turn it around. He said, we believe we can turn it around here. And I'm settled in Baltimore. This is the last team I'm playing for. He says he's going to hang him up after this year. Rashad Johnson, the safety is out. Flacco comes to the near side in front of Patrick Peterson. It's caught by Marlon Brown. Third year receiver undrafted out of Georgia minimal gain of two. Look at Joe Flacco in the huddle. He's got Aiken number 11. He was on the practice squad not long ago. He's got a lot of unknown receivers. You've seen Ross number 10. You've got a rookie tight end. He's got a new offense. You're on the road. You got to credit Joe Flacco. He's been as much a teacher as he has been a quarterback and he's got his hands full. Let's see if he can finish a drive. Buck Allen in the back. He'll take the screen on second and seven. And he'll put his shoulder down. The rookie out of Southern Cal gets the first down at the 15, make it the 14 yard line. Wow, Buck Allen had a big year at SC. Real speed. Watch this sideline drill. I like that. Lower the shoulder. Don't step out of bounds. Don't get pushed out of bounds. Get knocked out of bounds. Unless the clock says differently, good work by the young halfback. Forsett is back. Nice drive here by the Ravens again. Starting safety Rashad Johnson out two plays ago. 22 in red. Tony Jefferson in his place. Here is Forsett picking through. Oh, and Forsett into the end zone. And Baltimore on top. And Tony Jefferson at free safety can see why Forsett is in the Pro Bowl. Well, that's Justin Forsett. He uses his size to his advantage. He's going to hide behind his offensive line. He's going to cut this back, and he's going to find Jefferson one-on-one -on -one in the open field. And how about that move? Ooh. Justin Forsett, that's worth a second look, Mike. Watch this. This guy's good back. He came out of nowhere almost 1,300 yards last year, and that's what he's known for, making big runs. Got to credit the Ravens to come on the road yep. after a tough West Coast trip last week to take the lead before the half. 
Is that the remote control? You <laughs> renamed the remote control? That's great. I love it. Name the whole show after you at some point here. It's Tucker to make it 10-7. <laughs> great speed off the edge by Justin Bethel. He gets so close to blocking kicks. Justin for set. Backing up the Pro Bowl season with another good one. In the end zone to put Baltimore on top by three. Of course, after the game, it will be Sports Center at night. Scott Van Pelt, as always, after the Monday Nighters. Not only do we have Steve Young and Ray Lewis, Trent Dilfer, the former Ravens, those last two, and Steve Levy here, but SVP's got you covered. World Series preview, and Urban Meyer, head coach of the Rolling Buckeyes, will join Scott. So plenty ahead after we're done here in Glendale tonight, Sports Center at night. Good drive. Flacco was five for five. John, they went 84 yards down the field. Buck Allen with a big play. Smith with a big play and the touchdown by Forsett. Baltimore's on top here, late second. Been impressive. Let's see what Arizona's made of. Keep hearing about all this talent. It's time for him to put it together. He's such a good kicker. Right through the uprights again. No return on the Tucker. Kickoff. When we talk about Larry Fitzgerald, who stayed out here in the desert after 11 years, but maybe no more. Maybe he would go somewhere else. But they figured out the contract. He's in a position switch, and his first six games, John, those numbers 43, 583, six touchdowns, all career best in the first six games of the season four. He's what a pro football player is all about, right there. I love coming to do Cardinal games and talking to him. Great perspective. Very thoughtful. Whole scope of the game. Had so many different quarterbacks through the ways after Kurt Warner. Here, Palmer is in trouble. Nobody open downfield. Keeps it alive and just benches it. That's good coverage by the Ravens secondary. Doomerville tried to get to him. Uh, he was looking for his star wide receiver on a shallow cross. And Webb, number 21, gets some help from his linebacker teammate and there's Elvis Doomerville. He had 17 sacks last year. He's staying alive and <laughs> that's a 5'11 guy and 6'8 Belvier is just <laughs> kind of tantalizingly holding him away. No, you're not getting to my quarterback. Using those long arm or long arms was Jared. Andre Ellington in the slot. An underneath pass to the aforementioned Fitzgerald, the yard shy of the first down. They like these empty formations to get a pre-snap read for the quarterback. He sees this man-to-man -man all the way. It's a sharp slant pattern by Fitzgerald against the veteran Webb. And it sets up a third down and one. Baltimore has had a hard time defending play action passes in these situations. But it looks like Arizona is going to throw the ball from an open formation. Gresham in the short motion. And they will throw it. And go up top for Fitzgerald. Incomplete. So on third and one, where the Ravens had just been unable to stop anyone this year, they go for the shot, and they're doing a good job on third down defense tonight. Well, they try to run a little pick play at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see John Brown come down and pick Webb, the corner who plays over the top. And this Raven defense, who gave up 48%. 31st in the league has been off the field all three times on third down. You got to credit this Raven defense. We kick by Butler. Very good kick. 63 yards. Sends Ross back to the 17. And return to the 24. Ball comes out there. Buchanan a bit shaken up on the play as well. Let's see. It is Cardinals ball. The field judge pointing that it's Arizona ball. And there's a late flag as well. Justin Bethel, outstanding special teamer down there. Let's take a peek here as Bethel tries to pull it away from Ross. Is the knee down before the ball is moving? That will be the question. And this will be a very tight one. Ruled on the field initially as a turnover. We saw the point. See, that knee is down. We'll go piece the replays together. And there you see. The contact Buchanan got hit hard by Courtney Upshaw. 
The ruling on the field is that the ball was fumbled and recovered by Arizona. After the recovery, it was a dead ball, personal foul unnecessary roughness by number 27, Baltimore. That foul will be assessed half the distance from the end of the play. Arizona's ball, first down. Asa Jackson is the one who picks up that late flag. Not Upshaw who's involved in that play there. Now that is a turnover, so they'll take a look at it to see if the special team pro bowler Bethel knocked it out. Ron Torbert, the referee, has looked. New York has had a look. Jerry Austin, twice Super Bowl referee, is with us, and we've watched the replays here in break. And here's Ron Torbert with the answer. Well, what we're going to see is the knee is so close to the ground. After review, the ruling on the field stands mm -hmm. with the Arizona ball, first and ten, the 12 and a half yard line. There's not sufficient evidence to say whether he's down or not down. That's why they let the call stand, but his knee's on the ground. You don't have a, uh, the best look of the ball. Here was the penalty that happened on the back end. There's a lot of back and forth with Britton Golden, the wide receiver, and Asa Jackson of the Ravens. Both look just as guilty. They pick up Jackson for continuing it on, so you have the turnover and tack on half the distance on the penalty. So the Cardinals have a golden opportunity to take the lead. Chris Johnson in the back. Gresham stood up at the point of attack. Courtney Upshaw standoff allow the other Ravens to get to it and there'll be no game. Welcome back Chris Canty. Canty made a good play there to help on that stop. John this has been where the Cardinals told us the problem they've had this season especially against Pittsburgh down inside the 20. Well they had plays there they just didn't make them last week. Let's see if they can capitalize on a turnover. Second and 12. Palmer for Fitzgerald, and that's broken up by Webb, and a flag comes in. I thought Webb played this perfectly. And the one area on defense the Ravens have been excellent at is their red zone defense. It's a sharp post pattern. Fitzgerald widens out of his stance, breaks sharply back to the post. I think that's a great play that's by Webb. Defense for the hook and turn. Oh, Automatic oh, first down. It's the hook and turn, the so foul. the arm we don't see there is what they called. And at least he was specific with the call so you can get a look at it. They call not the left arm or the contact, but the right arm hooking and turning. And we'll see if that was worthy of a flag or not. In any case, it's first and goal for Arizona at the three. Gerald blocking Johnson stopped shy of the goal line as we get to the two. I don't ever see wide receivers do it. Larry Fitzgerald just did there, Mike. <laughs> Want to run an isolation, get a fullback or a guard, but not many people use their Pro Bowl flanker. <laughs> wow. Two minute warning here in Arizona. Turnover gets Arizona close. Uh, second and 12 pass interference. You see the right arm of Webb? That's what they called as a pass interference because they said hook and turn. And it looked like that arm got there as the ball arrived. It's interesting. Jerry Austin, you, John, both don't think that should have been pass interference. It's second and goal for Arizona here at the two. Trying to take the lead. Palmer throws it back to the corner. Gresham. A lot of contact, and it'll be first and goal at the one. That get, one was easy. Now they got the backup safety who has struggled. Trowick 28. Larry Fitzgerald sells the running play and that's clearly P.I. A lot of penalties this year against the Raven defense. Best interference defense number 28. At the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And number 53, AQ Shipley has checked in as a fullback. Must keep an eye on Jermaine Gresham. 
a huge tight end in these goal line situations. Going for them for him there and the Trawick penalty will make it first to go at the one at seven penalties on the Ravens in this first half Arizona assessed just one. Seventy-nine are eligible. Bradley Sowell, along with AJ AQ Shipley, the former Raven. First and goal, and it is Johnson who is stopped. Loss of a couple of yards. Boy, well, CJ Mosley, if you want to play between the tackles. You're going to have a hard time running the ball against Baltimore with this front and this young linebacker. Watch number 57. He reads this power play all the way. He runs through and stuffs it. He took on a pulling guard and made the tackle. That's oh, as that's good a good. play as you'll see a <laughs> linebacker make ever. Nice work by Mosley, second and three. 17th overall pick out of Bama. Yeah, come in and be the guy to replace what Ray Lewis brought. Well, you can, nobody can do that, but he's held himself quite well in his first year plus. But now second and goal will spread him out and throw it for Fitzgerald incomplete. It was bumping and a rub and a lot of contact. But Fitzgerald couldn't get to the pylon. Now it's third and goal. That's the second time they've tried to work a slot combination with a brush off. And you see Webb fight through the traffic. You got to let these guys play a little bit. Third down and goal and the red zone struggles. Of this Cardinal offense continue. Here they come in a no back set inside the five. David Johnson, the running back, the rookie running back, he's in the slot at the top of the screen. While we're on the slant, Michael Floyd into the end zone. Arizona takes the lead. Now we have a flag down in the end zone. Carson Palmer with the late signal. There is no foul on the play. The result of the play is a touchdown. He saw the coverage right before the ball is snapped. He'll signal to his left. Floyd and the rookie Johnson see it all the way. And Johnson runs clearance for Floyd. Watch 31. Johnson on the line of scrimmage. Break to the outside and brush off the coverage. <laughs> And Carson Palmer with a beautiful quick release to give Arizona the lead. There's so much communication there, both the offense and the defense. And the big body of Michael Floyd at 6-2, getting in the way, getting in the end zone for the second time. Getting zero as the extra point. 14 to 10, Arizona with a touchdown in each quarter. Back on top by four. With touchdown thrown by Carson Palmer. First tonight, 15th on the season, as he makes start number 150. Trying to get his career record up to 500. We've seen it over the years in Cincinnati. There was some talent, there were some good plays, big moments, Chad Ochocinco, all that stuff. The knee injury, he just couldn't get over the hump. And then he says, that's it, I want out of Cincinnati. Goes to the Raiders, it was a disappointment there, but shows up here, John, and this record since Week eight of 2013, 17 and four in win percentage. It's right there with Manning and Brady and Rodgers, who played more because Palmer missed all that time last year with the injury. Yeah, I think it's his best chance to not only get to the playoffs and win, but it's his best chance to win a championship. He loves this offense. It's his third year in the system. He understands it. He's got an excellent supporting cast, and they have experience playing together. There's a lot of continuity on this Arizona offense. And it could pay huge dividends down the stretch. No return on this kickoff. When you watched Palmer as we were getting ready for this game, I thought you made an interesting point. Here's a guy coming off an ACL injury, but he's mobile. His arm looks live. He looks like a young quarterback, not a guy towards the end of his career. No, he had his knee surgically repaired. I asked him if they installed a jugs machine in his right <laughs> shoulder. His movement in the pocket has been excellent. And his arm strength much improved because he had time to rest his arm, strengthen it. With all the time that he had working on the knee, 
It's as good as Palmer's played in a while. Let's see if their defense can finish the half. Baltimore two timeouts, a minute one on the clock. They get the ball to start the second half. And they're going to Crockett Gilmore, their tight end, dragging Buchanan, oh. who set him up for a hit to come off the line from Frosty Rucker. Gain of eight. This is an area Baltimore has really struggled, the two-minute drill. Struggled at the end of games, the 49er game, the Bengal game, the Bronco game. I didn't like their two-minute offense at the end of the half either. They haven't scored a lot of points in this two-minute drill, and that's uncommon for Flacco. Timeout taken here. There'll be one more to go for the Ravens. They try to decide if they're going to hop into a little quicker two-minute pace. Bo Toyota halftime coming up. Boomer's final drive is ahead. Chris Berman, his thoughts on those undefeated teams, their impressive performances yesterday. Adam and Mort have plenty of news. A coordinator change coming in Detroit. And Jalen Rose will join us from our studio in Los Angeles as we get set for the opening of the NBA season. The league opens tomorrow night. We'll have a doubleheader Wednesday night on ESPN. Jalen will set the table for you at halftime. Second and two, Flacco. That is behind four set incomplete. It's third down. With 49 to go. Hell, look at this Arizona defense. Who would thought? Who would have thought that Lamar Woodley would be on the sideline in a two-minute drill? The ex-Pittsburgh Steeler has come to Arizona. Has pretty much just been a run defender. They're going with Freeney, Marcus Golden. Important they get off the field and take a lead to the break. Like all out blitz. And third and two. Flacco with Freeney chasing. It's caught, but for set stays alive and gets pulled down by Tyron Matthew. With 40 seconds left, let's see if Arizona takes the timeout, and forces the punt here from Baltimore. That's what Arizona does a great job. It looks like it's going to be an all out blitz, and right before the snap of the ball, they don't bring six. They bring four and they play a zone coverage. They fool Joe Flacco and the Ravens. And here he is, Mike Patrick Peterson, extremely dangerous. I'll be surprised if Baltimore even gives him a chance. They have to snap it with two on the game clock. And Cook is very good at placing the ball. He will try not to kick it right down the middle and sends Peterson towards the sideline. It hits a Cardinal. Time's going to expire, so even if the Ravens recovered, they would not have had a chance to do anything with it. Mistake there on that uh, knuckling kick by Cook. Each team scored a touchdown there in the second. The Cardinals lead by four. Baltimore gets the ball to start the third quarter. And here's Chris with the Toyota halftime. Boomer. And Palmer against Joe Flacco. Used to see that in the AMC North. They renew acquaintances. On this Monday night in Arizona, Chris Johnson with a touchdown at 49 first half yards. Justin Forsett, 33 yards and a touch. Ravens were leading until right before the break. They kept knocking on the door down there. Michael Floyd punched it in. Arizona by four. John Gruden, Mike Tirico. We'll hear from Lisa Salters in a second. Let's look at these numbers here, John. The seven penalties, the points off turnover, kind of flips the game. It's why Baltimore is not leading. The Ravens had chances and got in their own way a couple of times. Story of their season, story of their first half. Can't win these tight games when you commit penalties. Here's a illegal substitution. They call it on John Urschel. I thought it was a terrible call, but it stopped the drive. Then the fumble by Jeremy Ross set up Arizona for a score. And then you see the pass interference call quite obvious on Trowick, the young safety penalties. Turnover ratio, a big reason why the Ravens are one in five. They have struggled when they have been behind at halftime. Let's see if they can find a way to get a much needed win on the road. Then we get the ball first to start this third quarter. And there is Jeremy Ross. Remember that uh, snow game in Philadelphia, Detroit, and Philly? Just a whole bunch of snow very quickly before that game. Ross had a punt return and a kickoff return for touchdown in that one. He was with the Packers. That success he had with the Lions, and now he is with Baltimore. They had to sign him after Michael Campanero went on IR. Touchback, and Lisa, what's going on with John Harbaugh at the break? Well, 
well, Mike, coming into this game, it was the Ravens defense, particularly the secondary, that was a cause for concern. John Harbaugh just told me that he's pleased with the way the defense is playing. He said they're getting good pressure on Carson Palmer. He said our DBs are doing a good job as well. That turnover didn't help, he said, but that wasn't the defense's fault. And on offense, Harbaugh said it's been tough handling Arizona's pressure, but so far we're doing it. He said the key is when they bring pressure, we've got to make them pay. Thank you, Lise. Four drives, a field goal, a touchdown, and a couple of punts. First play, Flacco to use check. You know what? You throw it over the first play of the first half of the second half last week, and you throw it over the first play of this game, you're going to kind of watch him the first play of this half. Get that well, you got to be careful, Mike, when Dayon Buchanan, this young inside linebacker, number 20, is going to come from inside out with 32, Tyron Matthew. <laughs> they were right with you, Mike. They read the <laughs> scouting report. Watch a fullback in a flat. They were in a contest to see who could get there first. Loss of a yard. And on second and 11, four sets got nowhere to go. Frosty Rucker, that 10 year vet, John, his hold off of Wagner there allowed the linebackers to come and make the tackle. I don't know what Buchanan is. He was drafted as a safety in the first round, but all he plays is linebacker. There should be an investigation. He should be wearing number 50 because he hasn't played a single snap of safety yet. This young man is an inside linebacker and the leading tackle tackler of this Cardinal defense. They got to put him in a linebacker number soon. No more investigations. <laughs> Marlon Brown is the motion man. Third and ten. Black up. Down. Freeney. Dwight Freeney back in the sack column. Guess what move he used? He sets you up with the speed rush. He gets Monroe working up the field and watch him on the spin move. Good night. General manager Steve Kine deserves a lot of credit. He brought in five veteran Pro Bowl players, Chris Johnson, Freeney, Gresham. You've seen them all pay huge dividends already tonight. The top 25 sack men of all time since they've been count counting individual sacks is Dwight Freeney. Cook with the punt. Again, a lot of different yeah. looks. This one down the middle, and Peterson's got it at the 40 with a head of Steve Peterson. Great tackle. Return of 11. Anthony Levine, senior. Excellent special teams play. Net of 40 on that one. 112 and a half sacks. Most of them with the Colts. There's one as a card. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. NFLshop.com. Find the largest selection of NFL products at the official store of the NFL. And Dunkin' Donuts. Check out this week's excessive celebration at DD Field Pass. Com. Spider Cam coverage tonight brought to you by Direct TV. Say hi, John. Blackie's here. Jerry's here. Marty Aronoff, MVP, Hall of Fame stat man. <laughs> Tony Granieri over there. Nice spot. Very cool. Good to have the whole team on hand here. University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale. Great field position to start the third for Carson Palmer and the Cardinals. On the Ravens side of the 49, Chris Johnson. Cut it up, got five, can't do the tackle. This running game, much improved. See it in the first half. Look at A.Q. Shipley set the edge. Wow. Chris Johnson takes advantage of that. Then they run a stretch play to the right. You see the zone blocking. And if you get Chris Johnson to the second level, he has the physicality to get through the second level. Beautiful open field running. Second and five, great field position. See the rush yards 57 Ravens give up 94 again. It's top 10 in the league Arizona a good first half Palmer pressured may have had his arm hit as that pass was incomplete good pass rush by Elvis Doomerville to get in there. Well they wanted to go to Michael Floyd one on one against Sharice Wright. But it's a pass rush. You saw Freeney on the previous possession at time Elvis Doomerville. Saves the day because Palmer wanted Floyd against Sharice Wright who just got to Baltimore. Sharice Wright was cut by San Francisco played against the 49ers beaten for a couple of touchdowns. Jermaine Gresham got hit in the head on that play so he's come out. David Johnson in at running back on third and five and the Ravens bring heat 
Palmer up top for Brown. What a grab at the 10. What a grab. What a throw. He he threw this ball before Brown was 20 yards down the field. What anticipation by Palmer and John Brown finds the ball in flight and protects it on impact. Great play. You know, Tom Moore, the ex offensive coordinator of the Indianapolis Colts is here. He had Marvin Harrison. So did Bruce Arians and they compare young John Brown to a young Marvin Harrison and that's saying something coming from these kind of coaches. Tom's 37th year in the NFL. He's seen a lot and coached a lot of greats too. David Johnson the back. He's got it. Chris Canty. It's third time we've called Canty here out of the gate in this second half. You know, Canty's missing a lot of his friends. McPhee left for Chicago. Suggs is on IR. Haloti Nata in Detroit. And Chris Canty, number 99, has missed a few games. It's great to see him back. You see the hand usage. He, too, has tremendous size for an inside player. Played well for a long time. Yeah, good in all those places. Four years in Dallas, four with the Giants. Third here in the Raven Purple. Second and goal, five in the pattern. It's a slant, and it is cut off. Brown could not get to his landmark. Jimmy Smith kept him from the spot. You know, when you see a no back operation, blitz it. They have no back, so blitz everybody, and they'll be one short in pass protection. You'll see the rookie from Kentucky unblock. Palmer has to get to his hot receiver before Zadarius Smith could get there and that's great work by Dean Peace the defensive coordinator of the Ravens he continues to mix it up the best he can with a lot of new players third and goal they bring the pressure again this time he beats it with the slant and David Johnson has the first down the running back who John for a rookie is uncommon pass catching ability. Well, you show the same blitz two plays in a row. You force the ball to come out. This time, Doomerville clean off the edge. And Palmer so quick with that release from the shotgun. So it'll be fourth and goal, and we'll get the field goal try for Catton Zero from 21 yards. That would have been a career long if he would have made the 55 that he tried earlier on. And Drew Butler will hold it. They're good from 21 and Arizona extends the lead to seven. So taking advantage of the good field position to start this quarter. Arizona, the leaders in the NFC West at four and two. Their losses by two to St. Louis and by 12 last week at Pittsburgh. Joe Flacco and the Ravens are right where they have been all season in a close game. And they have not been able to get over the hump except for the one overtime win on Thursday night in Pittsburgh. And they beat the Steelers 23-20. Five losses by a total of 22 points. It's the worst start in the 20-year franchise history of the Ravens. But as we've seen here tonight, they're not a bad team. Just got to find a way. Got to find a way to solve uh, some of the quality that Arizona secondary includes Tyron Matthew, John. He's unbelievable. He reminds me of a lot of the great players I've studied. I, I mean, Ronnie Lott, the greatest DPs of all time. One of my favorites, Rondé Barber, the best nickel corner I ever coached. Rodney Harrison drove me crazy. We couldn't block him. Fierce player, Charles Woodson, line him up anywhere on the football field. He's still doing it today. And I love Earl Thomas, one-on-one -on -one tackling ability in space. All these great safeties. I see a lot of those qualities in this young Tyron Matthew. He's special. Play action. Flacco first down underneath. He's got his tight end. It's a step by Boyle to the middle to the 31 yard line. It's a gain of 11. Well, just take a look at Matthew, what he's done tonight. If you want to throw the ball deep, you need a guy that has recovery speed and range. He covers about 27 yards in a hurry to bat that ball down. He blitzes off the edge. Big collision. And then he diagnoses plays extremely well. You see him close. He's got instincts, play speed, presence. And I love the fact Bruce Arians gave this kid a second chance. And I love to see guys take advantage of it. 
His versatility is going to come in handy. Gerard Powers, the starting quarter, is out for the rest of the game with a left hamstring injury. On first down, Flacco chased by Buchanan, got away, threw it dangerously across the middle, and Boyle's got it for a gain of four yards. Dale Buchanan coming off the edge. You don't know what he is. He's wearing number 20, but he's really a linebacker. They love to blitz him. They love to get him against four set. You're going to see him stem on the line of scrimmage and bring it off the left side. And Joe Flacco barely gets this ball away. And it was use check, not Boyle, my mistake. Buck Allen there in the backfield now on second and six. And Arizona sent to safety deep. Flacco adjusted for the moment and gives to Allen to get it to the 39 yard line. Is that what you were talking about with Flacco's command yeah. at the line of scrimmage? That's great, Mike. He saw the blitz coming to his left. This is a dead play if he runs the ball to his left. So he yells the words out, hey, kill it, kill it, kill it. We're going from a running play to the left to a running play to the right. It's not a big game, but it's a positive play. Would have been a train wreck had he stayed with the run into the blitz. Third down and two. Where is Steve Smith? Anywhere Patrick Peterson is on these third downs. Four rush, Flacco underneath, and it's caught for the first down by Marlon Brown. To be brought down shy of midfield. And Baltimore moving the chains here. A couple of the first downs on this drive. And Mark Trestman, the offensive coordinator, West Coast background. One of the feature patterns is the shallow cross. And if you throw the ball a foot in front of the receiver's numbers, he has a chance to run with it. Nice work by Flacco. Sets up Baltimore with a first down in great field position. And Justin Bethel, 28, Nine. is the player who has come in. Because of the injury to Powers, pressure from Matthew. Allen picked it up. Downfield pass is caught out of bounds, though, as Kamar Aiken tried to get that second foot down. You see Tyron Matthew come off the edge, and Buck Allen is 25 pounds bigger. But Matthew hits Buck Allen with authority and almost gets to Flacco. And there's Aiken. And Justin Bethel clearly out of bounds. That YouTube video of Matthew was hysterical. When the whole Honey Badger thing started. And every time he blitzes like that, I think of that video just sneaking around. Boom, attack. He's added a couple of thousand hits as people go back to watch that again. The 49 pressure picked up and dropped. Pass dropped by Brown. Well, it's these kind of plays that quietly ruin the night for John Harbaugh and the Ravens. Catch the football, put it away, and then run. And you have a manageable third and short. But now on third down and long, on the road, in this noise, you're in trouble. And here's where the depth of this defensive line needs to show up for Arizona. They should be fresh. And there's seven defensive backs out there. Play clock running down, play off. Here comes the pressure. Flacco fires. Back shoulder for Smith. Coverage Peterson. He wanted a flag the other way. It is fourth down. The Ravens, after two first downs, will kick it away. Patrick Peterson wins that one. He's 16 pounds lighter than he was last year, Mike. We saw that when he walked in our meeting yesterday. He looks a lot better physically. He's more confident. And he has prepared himself behind the scenes, I think, a lot better this year. Low snap, well scooped by Cook. Kicks the tumbler down. And Peterson caught at the five. Trying to want to run away from Juszczyk. Got a block, but gets to the sideline. It's well covered by the Ravens. And Arizona will take over at the 13 and start 150 for Carson Palmer. Trying to get the Arizona Cardinals to five and two. John mentioned it before Bruce Arians twice the coach of the year in the NFL 63 years old he's had a great opportunity to mentor Peyton Manning when he came in the league as a quarterback coach the great relationship they had Ben Roethlisberger and Bruce Arians 
then getting Andrew Luck the start of his career in Indianapolis. Now he gets here and they acquired Carson Palmer. It was really interesting talking to both of them, especially Palmer about the relationship. And Carson was very detailed about how detailed Bruce Arians is. He's always on you. None of the small things get by him, whether it's your eyes in a walkthrough, where your feet were, where those other receivers are. Bruce likes to keep everybody on edge, and it starts with the quarterbacks, and he's mentored some good ones along the way. Yeah, he's had some good ones, and I love the fact that he's calling the plays. It's a big reason why they've had some continuity here. This drive starts at the 13. It's Chris Johnson to the right. Gresham back in. Tried to block for him. He gets a couple of yards. Bruce Arians, when you call the plays, it's a great responsibility, certainly, but when you flip it to Joe Flacco, He's had a different offensive coordinator four for four years, and the three guys that have left have become head coaches. And that's what happens. You have to start from scratch to a degree, and it is a hard thing to do. So he's starting the relationship with Trespin on the other side. Palmer and Arians have been doing this now for three seasons. And there's a comfort, certainly, with the knowledge of the system, but there's the edge that is always kept on that quarterback. And Carson says he likes it. He thrives on that hard coaching he gets from Arians. Johnson to the right. And Canty again having a big game. I'm surprised that Arizona continues to test the strength of the Ravens defense. They had success with that play in the first half, the power play. That time Chris Canty was waiting for it. And on third down and seven, do the Ravens have enough pass rush? They have been depleted so bad with the departures of McPhee, the loss of Suggs. Do these young Ravens have what it takes to make some critical fourth quarter and late game stops? Doomerville misses his Robin on the other side. Or the one two combo he and Suggs off of each edge. Just not the same thus far this year, but he might get there here. Not in time, and Gresham makes him pay. At the 29 yard line, first down, Jermaine Gresham in front of the linebacker, Daryl Smith. Well, Daryl Smith. And one on one coverage with Gresham on an outside breaking route. But watch Doomerville come off the right side and hit Carson Palmer. Doomerville looks healthy. He came out of the Cleveland game with an injury, has struggled physically, but he looks like an old self right now. Sure does. Slowed by that groin injury. From the 30, Chris Johnson comes to the left. Jermaine Gresham blocking again. Johnson may not have been down. He was not. Stays alive. And Johnson takes it inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Boy, when it rains, it pours if you're Baltimore. And Arizona's trying to jump the ball and go quick. John Harbaugh wants to take out a flag and challenge. Yeah, no choice but to throw it. Body part down. He is lying on Williams there. Rolls over Williams. Gets back up. Harbaugh was saying he had stopped. He was stopped on the play. No challenge. It continues on. Johnson gains 62 on that carry. And here he gains about a yard and a half. And you can see the Cardinals offense is exhausted as they had to run all the way down the field. Well, Brandon Williams. The big nose tackle makes a great lateral pursuit play, but he brings down Chris Johnson on top of himself. And Johnson has the presence to get up and go. And you saw Harbaugh, he was saying he stopped. And sometimes in those situations when everybody stops, they'll just cut the play there. It was very close. He rolled over and kept going. In real time, it looked different. No whistle was blown, and Johnson turns it into a big play. Palmer, pressure. Out of the back. Nice catch. It won't count on Fitzgerald's stats, but 11 caught it in red. Looking for Jermaine Gresham, the big tight end. You got to credit Brendan Trowick, the young safety, mm -hmm. who struggled in the first half. That time he does a nice job in coverage, setting up a big third down. And a lot of wide receivers have checked in. Don't be surprised if Palmer doesn't use that no back set again. And be alert for some hand signals to put these Raven receivers in the best position possible. So they broke the huddle, and there's a four official conversation going on. Any 
he was in the pocket and clearly threw it out of the back of the end zone. It's rare that you see that ever called as intentional grounding. I don't know if that's what they're discussing here. <laughs> there is no foul for intentional grounding. It's an incomplete pass, second down. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds, please. Well, should last... it be third down? It should be third down, right? Because there was the running play after yes. the Chris Johnson run. Then it's second down, the incomplete pass. It's third down. The down marker says third down. It was just the incorrect announcement. 54, 54. Oh, they blitz this no back set the last two times, and here they come again. <laughs> Third and goal, Palmer. Slant again. That's caught and ruled down by contact on the grab by Brown. Another blitz by Dean Peace against this no back set. Let's see. If Brown is down, he's inside the one. He's going forward, gets inside the one. It would still be fourth and goal. Is there contact from Trowick underneath there? Or Sharice Wright, I should say, at any point. It's hard to tell there. As he crawls forward, the ball never crossed the plane. Then he's contacted by a defender. So it would be fourth and goal anywhere. Catanzaro kicks the field goal, and it's 20 to 10. Second straight 21 yard field goal. We go with opening night of the NBA season. NBA countdown with Sage Steele and Doug Collins and Jalen Rose start you at 7 Eastern then the Spurs and the Thunder huge city for Oklahoma old season for Oklahoma City I should say and then the Lakers will get Kobe Bryant back in all likelihood it's a battle of the first and the second overall pick in the draft where the Timberwolves meet the Lakers and of course Minnesota and Kevin Garnett and their players will be playing with a heavy heart with the passing of Flip Saunders at age 60. Cancer found out that news it's a gutting news yesterday wonderful person to cover and a uh, good friend to many of us our thoughts with the Saunders family and all the folks with the Timberwolves and we will uh, watch that team try to go out and play a basketball game Wednesday night we'll have it for you from LA no return as all the kickoffs have been tonight Baltimore will take over at the 20 when we come back The big guy's always in charge. Jerry Austin, twice Super Bowl referee. Let's go back to that run by Chris Johnson. We'll watch it real speed. Tell us what you see from an official's eyes. Okay, the official on the bottom, you see he starts to come in, but he rolls over. Just for a split second, it looks like he stopped, but he's still making an effort to go forward. Therefore, you can't say forward progress is truly stopped, and they officiated it like it should be. See him rolling over. He's still moving, trying to get forward. And he goes. Shouldn't he have raised his arm though, Jerry? He looked like he gave up on the play. I don't think so. All right, there you go. <laughs> Sounds like you guys have had that conversation before. Thank yeah. you, gentlemen. Thank you, Jerry. From the 24 right. set, runs to the right. He'll gain three yards on that play to the 23 yard line. You know, when you're on the backside of these zone stretch running plays, the offensive line tries to cut you, they try to chop your legs. And Calais Campbell refuses to go down ever. He has been a force on the backside all night long. Campbell is the kind of player that can line head up on you. He can beat you three ways inside, outside, or he'll run right over you. Steve Smith has seen Peterson come with him all night. He continues over to the left from the 23. Here's Flacco. On the cross, it's Smith, and he will get right to the first down line at the 30-yard line. Check that mark. Make sure he's got it. He does. First down. Steve Smith, another shallow cross. Coming in motion. They're trying to get Peterson off of him by using this motion. They have linebackers trying to bang him as he comes from underneath. And 
the great competitor, Steve Smith, done it for 15 years. Just passed the 30. It's back to Smith to try to get him across. He and Tyron Matthew, a little strong man battle there to the 34 gain of about four. If they had a five foot ten and under leg, <laughs> you're to, looking at two of the very best. Right. Steve Smith in motion, going to run into the flat, and there's the honey badger waiting on him. He almost gets this ball out of there. Steve Smith tonight. 78 yards moves him up to 11. Closing in on Chris Carter in the top 10 all time in NFL history in receiving yards. He's passed Ellard and gone past Andre Johnson as they have a back and forth as both remain active. He gets a break. Flacco throw inside to Crockett Gilmore. He'll come up a yard shy of the first down as the quarter comes to end. John, that play by Chris Johnson, you and I were here calling the BCS championship game on radio when Michael Dyer of Auburn did the same thing. It set up the game winning field goal when Auburn won the title. Did it to Oregon and that's right. Very similar play. Six points put up by the Cardinals. They're up 10 after three. ESPN celebrating the legacy of Monday Night Football. Twenty to ten, Arizona on top as we start the fourth quarter. Lone touchdown pass in the game came from Carson Palmer, former number one overall pick, the Heisman winner, the Super Bowl MVP Flacco, twenty of twenty-seven, trying to pick up third and one here and won't do it. As four set is stopped, Calais Campbell again. And John Harbaugh may go for this. Calais Campbell you see again on the middle of the screen inside move what a disruptive force he is heads up for a fake here there have been two fakes this year one a fake field goal by Baltimore they did fake a punt against Cincinnati fourth and two let's see the pool. Not this one very high with hang time making it a tough to catch one for Peterson right outside the 20 yard line. Again, all net on that 42 yard punt. John, you talked about the versatility of Campbell. We see it again tonight. Well, he's everywhere. He's in his eighth season. Here he is playing on the center at the nose position. He's playing right defensive end. And you keep watching this area is lined up at left defensive tackle over the right guard. Where is Calais Campbell? He's back at the three technique on the left guard. He's hard to block on the backside of these plays. Made his first Pro Bowl last year. He is on the top of his game mentally and physically that's what's called your prime Mike and he is doing it in prime time tonight five tackles three of them for loss the injured Raven is Trey Walker we have an injury timeout ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Direct TV call 1 800 Direct TV and Toyota, let's go places. See so playing guitarist Esteban. Esteban and company playing last night at Soundbites Grill in Sedona, Arizona. I guess our crew was attracted to Soundbites Grill, but Esteban is a locally renowned, tremendous artist. Trey Walker, the fourth round pick out of Texas Southern, was the injured player. He was escorted by two of the athletic training staff right to the locker room. Get an update. We'll give it to you. Andre Ellington is the running back for Arizona, and he gains three yards. Courtney Upshaw. Fitzgerald, he just stands over there waiting for Carson Palmer to bring him in motion to block the support. If there's a seventh man in the box, they signal for Fitzgerald to change his split. He's got to come in here and block this safety. He's trying like crazy to find that strong safety. That's what Heinz Ward did for Bruce Arians in Pittsburgh to make this one back running game go and Fitzgerald is doing that in Arizona for Bruce Arians. 
change to his repertoire with 954 catches. Not often a guy with that many catches starts doing that. Here is Ellington underneath for the first down at the 32 yard line for Andre. Baltimore continuing to blitz and Palmer continuing to unload it before the blitz can get there. Arizona knows Dean Peace is blitzing these open formations and Palmer had to answer that time. Here's Dean defensive coordinator was with New England 06 to 09. Ellington with a gain of a couple John we talked to Dean Peace at our meeting yesterday and you feel for him you alluded to it earlier with all the changes in the secondary you've got all this knowledge and this desire to do things you're just limited because you have no continuity in your secondary. Well if you simplify things so much it's to the disservice of your team and if you put too much in it's to the disservice of your team. So what do you do with all the new corners new safeties new players they have up front. It's hard to be competitive and great like they've been in the past without starting safety Kendrick Lewis tonight. This is second and seven Man. Ellington with a good run to the 41 yard line here. They're trying to line up and show they can run the ball and protect this 10 point lead. And why not run a power play with Mike you potty. We've seen him do that in San Francisco for a long time. And in this short yardage situation look at the big men that have just checked in for Baltimore. There's Williams 98 93 is guy. They've got to load it up and stop the run. And once again you must be careful of the play action pass. That's where Baltimore has been hurt in these short yardage situations. David Johnson now the back on third and one he runs to that left side keeps those legs moving and his forward progress should get him the first down past the 42 yard line. Well David Johnson the biggest back that Arizona has the former Northern Iowa collegiate drives his feet. Great effort to get the first down nice surge up front. Big first down. A lot of different backs but a lot of balance in this Carolina offense. I bet you can't name the leading rusher over the last few years for Arizona Mike. Can you. No. Oh, you can't. First and 10 for the 42 the pressure on Palmer Doomerville hit his arm as he went to throw the pass was incomplete. Doomerville is a problem has been and continues to be. I don't know if there's a breakdown in an assignment there but if there's one Baltimore Raven you have to be very careful of it's Elvis Doomerville. 17 sacks last year broke a Raven record. He's healthy and with the game on the line you got to be careful with him if you're Arizona. Baltimore in desperate need of a big play desperate need of a turnover. Fitzgerald got two blocks Larry Fitzgerald to the Ravens side of the 50 at the Baltimore 42 gain of 16. You can do a lot of things with athletic offensive linemen Veldeer at left tackle number 68 with the kick out on McClellan and Larry Fitzgerald. North South physical runner after the catch. Baltimore's on the ropes. Leading rusher last year, Ellington. Play action to him. Palmer wanted the deep shot. He'll take Ellington. Checks down out of the backfield. And a yard shy. Of the first down and John you talked about adding Chris Johnson Ellington led them in rushing last year for what you were referring to Richard Mendenhall the year before that LaRod <laughs> Stevens howling the year before that Beanie Wells Tim wow. Hightower it's been a different leading rusher for this team year after year after year. I told you <laughs> you see Carson Palmer moving in the pocket I mean That's this great. is a. 35 year old quarterback coming off major knee surgery. That's what's most impressive to me how well he moves in the pocket. Solid run chain mover first down as Ellington has done a very nice job 
on this drive. You mentioned it, it happened in the playoff game for Cincinnati early in that first quarter. Kimo Von Olhoffen got Carson, and then it happened last year against St. Louis. So here's Carson Palmer, all these years removed from 06 to 14. Eight and a half years between ACL injuries and the technology changes, the rehab changes, and the patient changed as well because he's a little bit older. So he attacked it. He talked to many people, did a lot of research, figuring out the best way at his age to come back from this. Michael Floyd on the edge, one on one. Beat him, Floyd. He'll be marked out of bounds inside the 10. It'll be first and goal at the five. They want to run this double team scheme behind Mike Upati. They've been running it right down Baltimore's throat. They love to run the play to the left. But if there's eight in the box, Palmer just picks the ball up and throws it out there to his wide receiver. And these receivers are really big and fast and hard to tackle. Carson Palmer, incredible story coming back from this knee. But he has complete control of this offense in year three under Bruce Arians. They give him 23 on that one. It's a drive. They picked up five first downs looking for the touchdown. Palmer. Brown in for the touchdown. John Brown. Smoky John Brown, they call him in Arizona. Blinding vertical speed, and he has short area quickness, and that's a real difficult combination to cover. Just a quick out by Brown and Carson Palmer on the move. Throws a pinpoint pass for six. You just get the feeling with Larry Fitzgerald first round pick Michael Floyd first round pick who's the best receiver who's your favorite target everybody says Smokey Brown <laughs> they right, right? love they Smokey love Brown here they love him I'd like to be Carson Palmer he's got some real arsenal to throw to with a running game you saw Brown right from pylon cam had the ball of a correct side that extra point is no good so the extra points 26 missed to this point this season after eight missed last year and that keeps it a 16 point game. So it keeps it a two possession game. The Ravens have a lot of work to do to get back after Palmer's touchdown pass second of the night. And Tom Moore has been around a long time, been with a lot of quarterbacks, loves what Carson Palmer can give this Arizona offense. And we talked about that movement on that surgically repaired knee times two. Well, watch him, Mike. He's looking down the field. He has to reset and move to find these outlet receivers. Here he is sprinting to his right. You don't normally call these kinds of plays with a man that's coming off a serious knee injury. Heck, he went to Detroit, Mike, earlier in the season and forgot to pack his knee brace. Can you imagine your starting quarterback making all this money coming off a major knee injury, not packing his knee brace? And the incredible part is there's so many people supporting a team. It's up to the player to pack his own bag. And Palmer forgets. Ross needs a big return, brings it out to the 25-yard line. That's the job I want. I want to be the Arizona Cardinal knee packing coach. <laughs> well, they've got enough coaches around here. <laughs> the Bidwells have given Steve Kime, the general manager, and Bruce Arians great latitude to bring in a lot of specialists, a lot of coaches and a ton of experience too. We showed you Tom Moore earlier. Uh, they have a wide variety of coaches young and old. It's uh, been a great part of this. Great connection Michael Bidwell the team president on the left Steve Kahn sitting next to him. Steve one of the uh, very good executives in this league. He and Bruce Arians hired within a week and a half of each other and they have worked very well together. Flacco pass incomplete intended for Kamar Aiken. That's a credit to this ownership and a credit to Bruce Arians. You have Tom Moore and Tom Pratt. Look at the experience they have. Tom Pratt was in Super Bowl one. He's 79 years old. They train the young coaches. And here's Dwight Freeney, Chris Johnson. It's these veteran players that train the young players. So the experienced coaches train the young coaches. They want the experienced blue chip veterans to train the young players. And it's a credit to Steve Kime, the ownership here in Arizona, and Bruce Arians for allowing this to happen. Second and ten, Flacco under pressure underneath. Crockett Gilmore, the tight end, tackled by Jefferson, the gain of eight. And Michael Bidwell, the president, took over in 2007. Of course, William Bidwell, his dad, so much a part of it for so long. Team has been in the Bidwell family since the Hall of Famer 
Charles W. Bidwell purchased the team. It's helped put a great uh, head coach in place of Bruce Arians, and it has fit. Double digit wins the last two years. Closing oh, in on five and two. Tyron Matthew off the edge. Get his man. You're a young football player. Get some Arizona defensive film and watch this kid play. He's unaccounted for. He's going to make the sack and the tackle, but Joe Flacco never saw him. And I love what Arizona did. Last week, statistically, they were doing a great job against Pittsburgh, but they didn't finish the game. They were unable to play a 60-minute contest. So far, so good. Sam Cook to kick it away again. Oh, boy. This is kicked towards the sideline. Peterson couldn't catch it. It's 50 and out of bounds. They look ugly. These are on purpose. They're trying to kick every kind of odd looking ball to make it hard for Peterson. Can't make it hard for the, I'll say it again, the honey badger. Tyron Matthew in print on the game again tonight. Arizona lost in the playoffs last year in Charlotte to the Panthers and we'll be there next Monday night to watch Cam Newton and company try to go to 7 and 0 and see what's going on with the Colts and Andrew Luck 3 and 4 lot going on with that team tough schedule ahead. they desperately need one we will see you from uptown Charlotte next Monday night countdown 6 Eastern time we'll kick it at 8 15 Eastern up 16 it's been Ellington for a good part of this Fourth quarter, he runs left 4 3. Well, he's in the Triple A club tonight. He's had excellent accuracy. Ball is thrown perfectly. Incredible anticipation. Hard to coach this. This takes years of work. Wow, that's great. And when you get into a tough situation, have a quarterback that can change the play with an audible. He sees this the whole way. He keeps Arizona. In the perfect play, he's throwing the ball with accuracy, great anticipation. He's audible when he's asked to, and he's been very, very good again tonight. Pressured here, and he'll go down. It's Zachary Orr, the undrafted second-year man out of North Texas, as the Ravens bring on the Heat to try to come up with a big play in the final six minutes of this one. And as I compliment players, usually something bad happens <laughs> at times. <laughs> I give a great package of audibles and anticipation and accuracy, and he gets blindsided by a blitz. Not good timing. It's okay. It's not your fault, really. It'll be all right. <laughs> Kiss of death. Ravens really have to make a stop here. David Johnson, the running back on third and 15. He comes out of the backfield. He's being spied, but got away from Smith. Won't get the first down. It'll be four yards shy. Kept inbounds. That was Daryl Smith's purpose. He was waiting and waiting. Johnson ran away, but the, the secondary saved him. Well, you see what the young Johnson has in his legs. He has outstanding speed and great hands. And Chris Johnson, David Johnson, Andre Ellington, a three-headed monster in this Arizona backfield. Be very careful with Ross. As you said earlier, he's had a history in this league for turning balls. Butler has a kick every game that he'd like to have back. Movement drops it back five yards. Ball start. Offense, number 55, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Just the second accepted penalty against the Cardinals on the night. This is the one area that Arizona has not been good this year. Their punter has struggled. Butler has statistically been at the bottom of the league. They need him to pick up his play and help Arizona in terms of field position. Near the bottom of net punting. Big rush by the Ravens! And it is blocked with a flag down. It is scooped up and brought to the one-yard line. Let's check the flag, though. It was scooped by Raheem Mostert. The block came from Asa Jackson. Who was flagged earlier? And let's see what the penalty was. Holding. Wow. Offense. Number 82. The penalty is declined. Result of the play is Baltimore's ball. First and goal 
The missed extra point made it a two possession game still. And here's the block. It's going to come off your left side. Actually, it comes right yeah. up the middle. It's 27 Jackson. The personal protector had to make a choice. Johnson went left. The hold was on the long snapper. And that wow. freed that gap for Jackson to come through and get it. Mostert recovered it. It's first and goal at the one or with a situation now. A Baltimore score and they'll go for two. Flacco will try to throw for it. And it's his check into the end zone. And the fullback out of Harvard has the receiving touchdown. Got to go for two. Ten point game. Try to make it a one possession game. It's a reverse pivot that spider three wide banana Mike full back in the flat Joe Flacco has Baltimore back in this football game. Second receiving touchdown of the year third of the career for use check. The Ohio native. Went to Harvard. For the two to make it a one possession game. Steve Smith to the left with Patrick Peterson. Oh, and movement by Crockett Gilmore. That is a terrible mistake by Gilmore. Ball start. Offense number 80. Five yard penalty. Replay a try. Nobody has younger tight ends in the NFL. Gilmore in his second year than two rookies. Oh, he just jumps off sides. You're going to use a check with me on these two point plays. You got to keep your poise in the noise, and that moves the ball back. To the seven yard line. Back up corner at the bottom of the screen. Remember Gerard Powers is out of this game. That's Justin Bethel. From the eight for the two the pressure is picked up Flacco slant is caught for the two point conversion. Nick Boyle against the honey badger. How about Nick Boyle. You said it. Blue hands, right? You got it. It's great throw by Flacco in a crowd. Boyle clutches it, secures it, and makes this a one possession game. Twenty six eighteen. The Ravens are back in it now. From that last drive, we were getting ready when the Ravens got the ball back to update a couple of injuries. Kaleche Osemele hurt his knee, Eugene Monroe's shoulder on that prior drive for Baltimore. That's the left side of their offensive line. They're out, but then they took over at the one, scored to the two point conversion, so there was a lot going on. We couldn't get you that info. You see Fitzgerald out there and Brown. That means hands team want to prepare against a special, uh, an onside kick. This is an outstanding special teams unit. Coached by Jerry Rosberg, Randy Brown, the kicking consultant. They've got a lot of tricks. Of course, John Harbaugh, former special teams coach. This is one of the tricks. They'll just try to pop it into a voided area. Arizona was all over, and it's fair caught by Peterson back at the 14-yard line. Well, why we still have a game. It would have been a three-score game if Catanzaro did not miss the extra point. And then the block punt. Recovered. They couldn't scoop and score, but most are recovered at the one. Use check catching the two point conversion. And then Flacco for the touchdown. And then the two point conversion with Flacco to Boyle gives us a one score game with 4.26 to go. Well, Drew Butler's got to get that punt off, Mike. I don't care what the time is supposed to be 2.0 or better. You're in a danger punt situation. You got to get that ball off quicker, knowing that the blitz has to be on. 2.0 is the time you want to get it off under. It was just over that 2.03. Thus the block punt. And now Arizona has to go to the four minute offense. They go to Chris Johnson, and he is stopped by Daryl Smith. No game. Daryl Smith, what a player he is. He had to succeed Ray Lewis, and he's done an unbelievable job as a leading tackler of this Raven defense. They're covering everybody up. They're keeping Smith clean to roam and make plays. Carson Palmer is going to have to throw the football if they want to move it. 
because running it against this Baltimore front in this situation will be tough. Still the full bucket of timeouts for Baltimore. Palmer to throw Doomerville was pressured Gresham the tight end great play call there gets the first down at the 26 yard line. Boy it's a screen pass with power action. They pull Mike U potty from left to right. They're going to make this look like it's a running play but Jermaine Gresham instead of blocking the backside he leaks out on a screen for a critical first down. Nice call by Bruce Arians. And you see you potty and Chris Johnson doing everything they can to keep Elvis Doomerville out of it. Inside of three we'll see if John Harbaugh uses his timeouts on this side of the two minute warning flag is down as Chris Johnson goes out of bounds and if that's a hold on the edge it would bring them back. It's like Gresham Mike. Holding offense number 84 10 yards for the previous spot replay first down inside of five minutes the fourth quarter of course the clock does not restart until the snap so it'll be 255 for this next snap you're at the point of attack oftentimes the tight end gets caught I didn't see anything there I just don't understand some of these flags that are thrown it's got to be obvious to make that call in this situation and that wasn't so first and 20 from their own 16 yard line Johnson left timeout taken by Baltimore you can always hear John Harbaugh right there in front of our sideline microphone and it will be second down with 251 remaining here in regulation John Harbaugh this has been a season of close calls and close calls and it's territory Baltimore is not used to. John Harbaugh Joe Flacco got started together that's been his quarterback for every game of his NFL career and they've won six out of their last seven years which is the tenure for these two Flacco and Harbaugh together they've been to the playoffs only once did they miss three times to the AFC championship game and of course some 32 months ago John beat his brother Jim Harbaugh to win the Super Bowl Baltimore over San Francisco. But now John at one and five the close games the Raven way found a way to win. They just haven't been able to in large part the massive turnover personnel from those Super Bowl teams and those great defenses. But they do compete and they're in every game until the very end. Second and 19 Palmer to throw it is complete with Gresham who will get to within three yards of the first down and Baltimore will exhaust its second timeout with 244 remaining. But the results have changed a little bit in Baltimore because his cast has changed so much as you said he's got a new receiving core he's got a new front four. But he has resisted giving in to anything and on this third down and three I'll be anxious to see what Dean Peace the defensive coordinator of Baltimore does he's got to load the box and prevent Arizona to run the football. And in so doing he's going to create some one on one situations. I think Bruce Arians with two halfbacks in the game is going to go to his no back set Mike. He's got Ellington and David Johnson in the game. They might spread Baltimore out again and use a no back set. How much of this call at this time is tendencies from earlier in the season or what you've seen in the game tonight. I think this is based on what you've seen tonight. But there's two halfbacks in the game. There's some deception going on. Third and three. Almost a must stop for the Ravens. Palmer pressure leaking out. Ellington's going to get there. First Good down call. at the 42 yard line. You were all over those two half backs. And it's enough for Arizona to get it. The only bad part was he went out of bounds, which would give Baltimore a chance to get it with a little time left if Arizona doesn't get another first down. Well, we call it a swap screen. So you see one back go this way, one back goes the other, and it confuses the coverage of the Ravens. One back goes to the right the other back goes to the left. They pick off the coverage and Andre Ellington. All these backs can catch the ball. What a great catch at crunch time by Andre Ellington. And the only reason Chris Johnson is in town because Ellington and David Johnson 
were hurt in training camp. Now they're all working together. Baltimore will have a chance to get the ball back with about a minute left if they don't allow Arizona to get a first down. Here's the stop there on the first down run with Williams. Baltimore uses its final timeout here. 2.32 to go. So Baltimore exhausting the timeouts. Second down play, as long as they run it, will take it to the two minute warning. And the third down play would take it inside a minute 15. So about a minute eight or seven if they can stop them, depending on Arizona's play calls. There are all those close calls, John. Well, look Six at, at Denver. Yeah, look, Mike, look at where they've been, though. At Denver, at Oakland. I mean, they're at San Francisco. They're at Arizona tonight. They've got to fly all the way back to Baltimore on a short week, play a home game. Five of their first seven games on the road, four West Coast trips. I'd have jet lag if I was a Raven. They did stay out West between that first and second game. Did not do it this time around. Arizona stayed East as they played back-to-back -back home games before this one. Second and ten. It will be a throw. Palmer has better be completed. Oh, this is a clock saver. That should be grounding, too. Is he in the pocket? If he's in the pocket, it should be grounding. There's the flat. Arian says he's out of the pocket. Well, look. But Torbert, the referee, says no. Now they're pointing to say there's an eligible receiver nearby. It's like he's expecting Gresham to get out in the flat, but. Well, he's in the pocket, and there's no receiver within 14 yards there. Why throw the ball in that situation to stop the clock? Let's see here. They can say Gresham's there or no. All right. Intentional grounding. Wow. Offense, number three. Quarterback was in the pocket under duress, threw the ball where there was not an eligible receiver in the vicinity. That's lost a down, the spot of the foul, third down. And, and what you said is so true, John. There's so much passing and short passing. People have gotten away from maximize the time that you run off the clock. And when I gave those numbers before, that's just based on if you play it out the right way, there's a minute five left when Baltimore gets the ball and no timeouts. No timeouts. Here, if they stop them, they're going to get the ball back. On the other side of the two-minute warning, I'd be talking. Two. I'd be talking to Drew Butler because they're going to try to block that punt again. They yeah. know he struggles to get it off. So the grounding makes it third and 22. They need to get to the Baltimore 46 to keep it going, and they will run it with David Johnson, who's going to be stopped at the 38-yard line. We'll spin down to the two-minute warning, and Arizona will have to punt it away. And they're going to come with the block, I believe, again. They got it right up the middle Jackson the last time and Butler has to catch it and get rid of it Mike almost like you're backed up inside your own one yard line. He's got to get rid of this football in a hurry time to think about it at the two minute warning Baltimore hanging on still alive. Morning here in Arizona, still a one possession game. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Levy. Make sure you stay tuned after the game. Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. I'll be joined by Steve Young and Trent Dilfer and Ray Lewis. We'll break it all down. SVP will chat with Ohio State head football coach Urban Meyer and Lewis Riddick with more on just the latest Greg Hardy blow up. That's all coming up. Sports Center at night. Immediately following the game, Mike and John take us home. Okay, Steve, two gifts put pressure on Drew Butler in this punt. Ellington running out of bounds. Although he did pick up the first down and then the incomplete pass compounded by the intentional grounding last punt of Butler's was blocked the fourth blocked punt of his career Will Baltimore set up a return or come after him? they're coming after it. the personal protector Rashad Johnson calls the gunners in it gives Baltimore a return chance if it gets off Butler gets rid of it is high. And part of the 24-yard line, a fair catch is made by Jeremy Ross. So here is Baltimore in a situation, John, they've seen so often this year. Their ball, 153 left, a chance to go down the field, in this case, tie the game. And essentially, they've been unsuccessful everything but the Pittsburgh game this year. Back up offensive lineman in the game, Mike, at left tackle, number 74, James Hurst. Urschel at left guard, number 64. Can the fourth quarter pass rush led by Dwight Freeney capitalize? That's the side they should take advantage of. Here we go, Flacco in trouble, steps up, pursued, gets away from Freeney, lobs it to the sideline, incomplete. 
as Steve Smith Tyron Matthew and a whole bunch of folks converging on that Baltimore sideline. That's why Freeney was brought through the desert. Take a look at him on the left side. They keep Gilmore at tight end into block and Flacco under serious fire. Barely avoids the sack. Arizona lost the Super Bowl to Pittsburgh because they lacked a fourth quarter pass rush. Let's see if they found one. Second and 10. Crosser is caught. Brown. Yard shy of the first down is Marlon Brown of the 33. Got to hurry. And watch the Arizona offensive lineman, your old quarterback, Rich Gannon, broadcast the game last week. You notice in this situation, Baltimore's linemen were not with urgency up to the ball in these spots with a turning clock and no timeouts. Third and one, Flacco, compressed pocket, passes incomplete. Peterson on the coverage, Brown the intended receiver, and we're down to fourth and one. Greeny's disappointed in himself. Look what he's doing over here, right defensive end. <laughs> He is breathing fire on Joe Flacco. They've got to get a chip or a nudge or some kind of help for their backup left tackle, James Hurst. Fourth down and one. Expect a sprint out to the right. Got to keep this drive alive. But the ball has to come out quick. Here comes Arizona with all they have. They bring five. Freeney chasing. Flacco trying to keep the game alive. Throws it across and it's caught. Gilmore to the 42. And it goes on with 107 remaining in regulation. Joe Flacco, he's been here every single game all season long. He's had Baltimore on the brink. 21 times he's brought him back. Can he do it again? Steve Smith in the slot. To Smith, incomplete. He didn't look that way. Tyron Matthew was in that area of the uh, zone coverage. Second and 10 with 48 remain. And here comes some fresh pass rushers. 91, Stinson in the game. 96, Kareem Martin. Smith coming off the field here, along with Marlon Brown, as they ran those five consecutive plays. So backup linemen, backup receivers in there for Flacco as. Chris Givens and Kamar Aiken are in there. Who are these three receivers? <laughs> Unbelievable. Here comes the blitz. Matthew off the corner. Flacco putting it up deep for Givens. Oh. Who's got it? Out of bounds. Game very much alive with 41 seconds left at the Arizona 27-yard line. Chris Givens just got here in a trade. Working one-on-one -on -one against a backup corner. Bethel blew the coverage. Bethel. Clearly expecting help over the top, didn't get it. But Joe Flacco with receivers that just got here and learned this offense. Top of the screen now, 13 Gibbons working against Bethel again. Smith back in as well. 40 seconds remain. Flacco firing towards Smith in double coverage, and he just gets rid of it. Out of bounds and incomplete. It'll be second down. Here comes the fresh Dwight Freeney. I wonder what kind of shape Freeney's in. Freeney was going to retire if he was uh, unsigned after week two. It went to a week five. He was working on his golf game, brought his handicap down a few strokes. It's a far different story now. This is where you find out what you're made of on defense, Mike. Uh -huh. A lot of things have gone wrong. A lot of things are going against you. Put your foot down. Find a way to get a stop going to be hard to do against the world champion Flacco. He'll empty the backfield now. Arizona adjust. Freeney a free rush. Throw it up in the middle of the field to Gilmore. What a catch! At the four, they have no timeouts. They'll try to clock it. They come with an all-out blitz. Joe Flacco read it perfectly. And ah. Crockett Gilmore redeems himself. Clocked at 18, so they should have three or four chances to go to the end zone. Size always been a huge factor down the field, and Crockett Gilmore goes up and gets it against the undersized Jefferson. Third round pick from Colorado State last year. Even this week, he said, I should still be a defensive end like he was in his early days in Fort Collins. Wants to be a pass rusher. 
I expect Flacco to use the field here and sprint out to his right. Boyle, the rookie tight end, is split out at the top of the screen. Play clock, watch the play clock. They're having trouble getting lined up. They're all over the map. Flags are down. Flacco's throw to Smith is complete. Steve is down, but there are flags down. Now the clock was stopped. So there's no runoff. It's probably an illegal formation, but they're going to need to talk about it here. The conversation going on with the three officials was someone off the line of scrimmage there or not? Once they determine this, John Smith was stopped inbounds. So they're going to need to be ready to run a play if, in fact, there was no flag. Illegal shift. There was. By the offense, all 11 players did not get set before the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Again, play with a dead clock, so there's no 10-second runoff. Yeah, it should have been a false start. Not an illegal shift because Smith got set again. They are running personnel in and out. Bruce Arians wants a penalty on Baltimore for illegal substitution because he's Should've trying been. to change his guys now. At 12 in a huddle, Bruce Arians can't believe it. Now he's got to take a timeout to get his army straight. Timeout, Arizona. This has not been pretty in terms of execution here in the fourth quarter all the way around. And this is a huge advantage right now for Baltimore, Mike, because they get time to go to the sideline and get the play that they want. Mark Trestman has a good opportunity to look over his sideline sheet, talk to his coaches. You get Steve Smith a little bit of rest, and you give your quarterback the best play possible. He's got plenty of time for two plays. But Joe Flacco, the veteran quarterback, now gets time to relay a lot of information to some key people, and some of these players are brand new here. And again, John, let's point out what you said at the beginning of this drive. No Eugene Monroe left tackle, no Coletio Semele left guard. Both went out a couple of drives ago. Backup offensive lineman on the left side. Second and goal. All out blitz. Flacco back, pressure on to the middle again for Gilmore, and it is! Secured and intercepted by Tony Jefferson. You talk about Arizona's history of blitzing under Todd Bowles. You have to credit James Betcher, the new defensive coordinator of Arizona. With the game on the line, he brings the house. Unblocked player coming off the right side of the screen. Flacco has no choice but to elevate this ball to his big tight end. And Jefferson with another interception for this Cardinal defense, and they are really good at taking the ball away. He does a great job of almost coming to a short stop here once he secures the ball to end the game, essentially, and get Carson Palmer in start 150, win number 75. But we and do it ends, John, much like the game in Denver did for Baltimore. They got down there close, and they throw an interception. Flacco had no choice. He couldn't take a sack there with the clock running down and no timeouts. Sports Center coming up. GMC postgame report. A lot to discuss in this one. Arizona remains in first. They are 5-2. The Ravens join the Lions, the worst record in the NFL after seven weeks at one and six. Cardinals 26, Ravens 18. GMC postgame coming up. Back to Glendale with the Gruden Grinder. Scott Van Pelt standing by for Sports Center. It all comes up in a moment.